upset. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Oh. Of the of the hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Talking about indie wrestling, uh, interviews, and, and such experiences. Getting, getting, getting rolling with things. Thank you, everybody, checking things out. And then, of course, last week we had John Thorne of Absolute Intense Wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. Uh, and uh, a video producer here in Pittsburgh with IndieWrestling.us, Sorgatron Media, helping out uh, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and a few other projects as well with the wrestling world and otherwise. With me is the co host, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Eamon Payton, at Eamon to Please on the Twitter from San Antonio, Texas. Hello, Sorg. I am so excited to talk to you about your adventures. <laughs> I mean, of your wacky and wild adventures. And we got another very special guest I'll introduce in just a moment. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find this show, as well as so many other ones in all the wrestling world. Show reviews and, and other great, great content. Interviews with uh, Vampiro. They had uh, impromptu over on the Midweek War for Lucha Underground a couple weeks ago. And Krista Joseph. And and just a great history of stuff uh, that we, we've had over the uh, years. Um, and of course, you know, drop us a line at Mayhem Show or uh, the hotline 412 206 WMS0 or good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, if you like everything that we're doing here, of course, there's a Patreon for the main show that you can join as well, or just tell a friend, share the stories, and support indie wrestling along the way as well. Indie wrestling.us, pro wrestling slash WMS. Now, who's with us tonight? Our friend from Poughkeepsie, New York, Mad Mike. He frequents us on the regular Wrestling Mayhem Show as well as Mega Week Wars and other projects here around the Wrestling Mayhem Show halls. Uh, uh, you 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 just had a pretty uh, fun, interesting uh, experience, a trip uh, out west a little bit, right? I I, I did, Sorg. Um, I got to see some some uh, pro wrestlers at San Diego Comic Con. Nice, nice. Our man on the street. Uh, and, and but I know you were lined up uh, last I knew to to talk to somebody very special that that uh, a lot of us are a fan of here in in the Mayhem Show world. Um, Sorg, I I was signed up to talk to this guy. For those of you who can't see my button, that is Mister Seto Miedo himself, Pentagon Junior. Nice. Now I guess known as Pentagon Dark. And. That, that like before the interview that's how i'm like should i address you as pentagon jr or pentagon dark i, I didn't want to you know offend him <laughs> <laughs> you know because reasons so well yeah i mean are i sorg i may be a lefty but i enjoy both of my arms <laughs> in a non-broken capacity well let's let's check it out and see it how... was it was still friday i had a lot more stuff to do with the <laughs> true 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 well let's go see how that conversation went with pentagon dark now you're not going to snap my arm if i say anything bad in this interview are you no no just make maybe sure. maybe <laughs> just making sure <laughs> so i just saw ultima lucha those um part three last night quite an interesting uh change for you to go from pentagon jr to pentagon dark Está hablando de cambio. Ajá, sí, sí, por eso te digo, pero sí lo puedo decir. Sí, ya pasó. Ok. Es, es un cambio que tuvo que hacer Pentagón Junior para hacerse más fuerte. Un cambio que Vampiro planeó para que yo fuera más fuerte y más violento y más oscuro. Por eso es que el nuevo nombre es Pentagón Junior. So it's a change that Pentagon Jr. had to go through to make himself stronger. Yeah. And it's a change that Vampiro planned for him to make him stronger and darker. Mm -hmm. And it's something that he had to do to make himself even better. Even though like I know you went in the cage the cave with uh, Vampiro, like he set he set that up. It kinda seemed like toward the end of Ultima Lucha it backfired on because you went to town on with the uh, barbed wire bat. Así es, Pentagón Dark no respeta a nadie, no importa quién esté enfrente de él, él no respeta a nadie y la prueba fue que ni a Vampiro lo respetó. Pentagón Dark no respeta a nadie y no importa quién esté enfrente de él, él no respeta a nadie y la prueba fue que ni a Vampiro lo respetó. 
sign yeah. to a bump here. Yeah. So now I know you had um, issues with Dario uh, against the Monster Matanza. Is is that still your goal, the Lucha Underground Championship, or are you going to be like going for someone else in uh, season three? Yo pienso que Matanza es el primer paso de algo muy grande. Después de Matanza tienen que venir cosas más grandes todavía. Y por supuesto, yo saldré victorioso. He sees Matanza a step number one in a long list of things that he has to do. But no matter what, he knows he's going to come out on top. Is there anyone, I mean, you don't have to tell me if there's anyone else on your hit list. I would assume Mil Muertes is probably on there too for, uh, you know, just all the interactions you guys have had. Están todos, todos los que conforman Lucha Onda. Porque Pentagon Dark no es amigo de nadie. Pentagon Dark no respeta a nadie. Todo aquel que esté arriba del ring frente a mí, en ese momento, es mi enemigo. Everyone on the roster is on the list. It makes sense. Pentagon Dark just wants to tear everybody else apart. And whoever is in the ring at that moment is his target and is going down. Okay. Switching gears for a second. Were you able to appreciate the match that Rey Mysterio and Prince Puma had at the end of Ultima Lucha? Because I know you came out afterwards and assaulted Vampiro, but were you able to appreciate like what Rey Mysterio brings to Lucha Underground? No me interesa la primera lucha, la verdad no me interesa porque no estoy yo. Uh, la segunda, ¿qué trae Rey Misterio a, a Lucha Onda? ¿Qué aporta? Lástima, que ya está viejo, está retirado y yo me voy a encargar de acabarlo. Pentagon Dark va a acabar a Rey Misterio. So he, he doesn't care about the match because it didn't involve him. Fair enough. And he's not really concerned about Ray. Um, what he brings is just, he's old, he should be retired, and Pentagon Dark is going to make sure of that, finish that. Okay. Do you have designs on taking over Lucha Underground, like taking down Dario for good and just running it yourself, or just wanting to destroy everyone in Lucha Underground? Mi objetivo es que Pentagon Dar es el rey de lucha onda. Es el que va a poner las reglas después de acabar con todos ellos. So his intention is to be the one that makes all the rules have to follow and the one that just puts everyone in order. Okay. And makes everyone's life a little bit harder. Um, all right, so I think this will be my last one. When you obtain that goal, because I have every confidence you will, what would be the first thing you would do? No sé, tengo que pensar cómo quiero manejar el templo. El templo tiene que girar alrededor de Pentagon. So he's still thinking about it, but the main thing is that the whole temple is going to revolve around him. Okay. Y, y hacer, cuando yo ponga las reglas dentro del templo, Quiero enfrentar luchadores para ver su potencial y el mejor enfrentarlo. And one of the things he does want to do is he wants to pair people against each other so he can really find out who's the best and what they're made of and then face them. Excellent. I, I, I love that idea. I, I can't Thank wait for you. you to take over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Interview with Pentagon Dark Jr. Depends on who you ask, especially him. Uh, <laughs> oh, he held up Pentagon. Uh, there, there's that too. There's that too. Uh, uh, Mike, of course, he had a lot of experiences there wrestling and otherwise. Uh, you know, uh, other than you know what we just heard, what was it like to to first meet Pentagon uh, and and kind of experience some of the other stuff around there around the wrestling world? Uh, well, meeting him, I I was actually kind of terrified. <laughs> Um, well, no, I, not only because on Lucha Underground, I've seen this guy like go through light tubes and everything like that, but it was also my first one-on-one interview that I've ever done like in person. So, um, but luckily he was such a welcoming, um, just, just guy. Like he sat down shook my hand and everything. Like we joked around a little bit. Um, he did have to speak through a translator. Mm Mm-hmm. 
which I was prepared for, but at the same time, it's still a little awkward because you can't have like almost a proper back and forth because I asked the question. He's he's like looking and responding to me asking the question, and then uh, she translated for him, and then he gave his response, and you know I had to give my answer, but it, it was uh, it was really a lot of fun. Um, he we were mostly in character as you as you heard, um, but it was still a really cool experience, like just to kind of see him be that guy. Like he was definitely like he 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 kind of was that guy, and it was really a lot of fun because you don't see that guy outside of the world of the temple. Mm. Like, and that's kind of the point. Like there were a few other guys that were there too. Like I saw Dario Cueto. I saw, uh, Mil Muertes and Katrina. And by the way, Mil Muertes, he looks very dapper in a suit. He looks very dapper in a suit. Um, I, I, I believe I got a picture of Mill in his suit and I'll see if I can post on the, uh, on the mayhem show Facebook group. But uh, yeah, it was just really a lot of fun. Like the the people who were working there for Lucha were very welcoming. Like uh, they were just happy to have a lot of people because there were there were a significant amount of people lined up for Lucha Underground, which I was kind of surprised by because you know it's still kind of a niche thing. But then again, you're in California, so more people pr- probably heard of it. Yeah, that. and you're and you're real close to where they film, and considering the the mass of people that come out for that. I, yeah. I think I think you were pretty like people are going to come down for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. certainly. But uh, Sorg, uh, meeting Pentagon was not the only thing wrestling related I got to do at Comic Con. Oh, no? no, I got I went to a panel called um, Comics in the Squared Circle, and it uh, had a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Mike Kingston. Uh, he was talking about his comic Headlocked, and it had um, I'm forgetting her name but i had the daughter of andre the giant there she was talking about the graphic novel about andre that came out uh last year oh which is which great. Actually, it's a great read by the way fantastic read yeah I've been, I've been looking for it everywhere we don't i can't seem to find it around here i because they were showing us some some uh some panels from it and it looked really really fun i just haven't had a chance to get it yet but um also in attendance there was chavo guerrero hmm. a fellow lucha underground star and did you know Chavo actually has a comic book out? I did. I did not. Yeah. Chavo is actually, uh, he has his own graphic novel coming out. Um, he ironically never told us the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like he, like, cause I, it took me a while for him to, for me to even ask him what his comic was about. He was just talking about doing it, but it's apparently about the Guerrero family and how many years ago, <laughs> the Carrero family uh, was protecting this ancient lake that gave you superpowers from rival clans, and I, I believe it was a, like it was a Gory Guerrero. I think he didn't mention which one of his relatives it was, but one of his ancient relatives uh, pushed back the the rival clans for for good, or so they thought. And now it's and now like Chavo is getting close to retirement and he finds out about this history that his family had and the next generation of the rivals come in and he gets superpowers from this lake to defend it. It seems super interesting. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, but it, it was kind of fun because they talked about some of like the vast missteps that WWE's had in the comic book world, i.e. things with Paul Bearer having not so fun things happen to him and uh, the ultimate warrior and Santa Claus and their interaction, basically all the old WWE and WCW comics that were just horrible. (laughs) Uh, And that's when I I brought up the Lucha Underground comic, which um, the lovely people at Lucha Underground sent me all three issues. Nice. And, um, I mean, these are free online. If you haven't read these, you need to, because hot damn, are they a lot of fun. If you like Lucha Underground, you'll love the comics, because those are like interstitials between seasons one and two. But uh, yeah, it was really kind of fun. I got to talk to Chavo a little bit afterwards. Someone actually asked Chavo if he was thinking about maybe doing a comic about Eddie, similar to they have a comic about Andre, like the graphic novel. And 
Chavo said that sounds like an amazing idea, and he'd probably have to run it by Vicky. But like, I think I think that would be an amazing, amazing concept. Oh yeah, because you can you can have everything. Like you can have you know the ups and the really really highs and the really really lows of Eddie. And I think that would be a compelling graphic novel. And, and, and it's something I think it could be visually interesting because I think like the Andre book, like there was a lot of things that are like probably big long stories that they capture in like like six panels, you know, mm-hmm. like like things like that. Um, and I think that's something they could have a lot of fun with with uh, with with the Eddie stuff too. So, but, I mean, yeah, not- and also um, they're coming out with a new WWE comic too. I mm-hmm. believe it's done by uh, Boom Studios. Yeah, yeah, which tend to do a pretty decent job with with like licensed properties too. Yeah, I got I got a couple because they had uh, these blind bag one shots. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm like they were five bucks each, so I bought four of them. They're actually pretty awesome. Like uh, I, I mean, the WWE graphic novels as of late have been very touch and go. If you've read the McFoley ones, you kind of get what I mean. Okay. Um. But but I I feel like the boom comic could be something fun because it looks like they're actually gonna play off the storylines and not try and reinvent the wheel as it were. Cool. And the art the art looked amazing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And of course, you have a lot more that that you had. Uh, uh, we t- talked a little bit actually on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. If you're a Patreon supporter, uh, you talked a little bit about the WWE experiences that you did have as well. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so it's cool that there's like this wrestling presence at. Uh, San Diego Comic Con. I know I was amazed when I'm like walking through New York City Comic Con the first time, and I found that's when I discovered head like head headlock comics and and Mike and and there was like I think like Scott Steiner and the Honky Tonk Man were hanging at his booth at the time or something <laughs> something crazy like that. One of the one of the, one of the girls from Impact Wrestling was there, and it was just like like it's not the thing I expected there, right? Uh, but that's 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 really cool, and of course I've come to know it's it's pretty. There's usually a wrestler or two at, at and these kinds of there, things. There there was kind of a funny moment, um, because the Mattel booth was located right next to the WWE booth, mm-hmm. uh, next to the uh, Mar- uh, Marvel booth, mm-hmm. and when New Day was there, was the same time that they're bringing out the entire cast of Luke Cage. <laughs> so uh, first of all, only at Comic Con will you ever get to say that sentence, uh, but um. So while New Day was there, everyone, of course, naturally was chanting, New Day rocks. New Day rocks. There was one guy at Marvel, bless his heart, had no idea who he was getting to. He thought people were chanting, Luke Cage rocks. <laughs> he had no idea what was going wow. on. Wow. It was fantastic. <laughs> Because he saw a whole bunch of people chanting and clapping and everything. And I just saw the one dude bouncing in the Marvel shirt going, Luke Cage rocks. Luke Cage rocks. I'm like, no. I mean, he, yes, he does. But no, nobody. Not right now. There, there's there's unicorns present. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, of they course. Also, they also okay. had a giant box of bootios that you could take pictures with. <laughs> Well, of course, there's going to be more stuff, uh, and I say you got to write up and stuff. So keep an eye on Wrestling Mayhem Show and a few other places, and we'll we'll be sharing those um, all across from uh, your trip uh, as well. So thanks a lot for uh, bringing a lot back uh, for us uh, from San Diego Comic Con, Mike. Yeah, no problem, Sork. Uh, well, well, you were out west uh, doing that. I had a fairly different experience uh, in Ohio, in the middle of Ohio. Uh, outside Columbus, of course, uh, we've talked about this last year. Any long-time listeners, uh, probably the last two years we've talked about this, actually. Uh, the Gathering of the Juggalos. I'm a long-time Juggalo. Uh, actually, these very shows that you're doing are because I was a Juggalo and had some other things I was doing that turned into this stuff. But uh, I went back, and one of the big things for me is the music and the wrestling. That's the the big big thing for me. It's it's kind of the meaning of a uh, of, of 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 a couple sides of my world. So so I love doing that. And of course, they had three uh, pretty good shows going on uh, uh, over this weekend. Um, plus another show that, that I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but uh, they had a pretty cool mix. Um, typically, this wrestling starts at about one in the morning. Uh, so that's. It, it, that, that that's the first kind of difference, right? Because um, I remember <laughs> they used to do these, and you'd be baking in the middle of the sun, at one o'clock in the afternoon in in, in the sun. 
you know, waiting for like, you know, dude, waiting for this. And, and I've seen some pretty decent stuff. I've seen like a TNA invasion one one year with like Ron Killings. Yes, Ron Killings and Jeff Jarrett and and, and, and James Storm and all those guys. Rudy Charles, now current WWE uh, referee. I saw it like get a beer bottle smashed in his face and bleeding all over the place. Like by a fan, like not not by wrestlers. Um, and uh, and met Jerry, Jeremy Borash in, in the line for pizza at one in the morning, too. Uh, that was interesting. Um, they were calling him Justin Bieber, like they were chanting, but Justin Bieber, what I don't know, when he was coming out to announce, that was interesting, but no, still, still fun. They had their uh, Strangle Mania event, which was just kind of a, a their general wrestling when they have live commentary, uh, with uh, Kevin Gill and Shaggy Two Dope, and of course, you know, uh, all this coming from like the Strangle Mania tapes. Uh, from back in the day where ICP would commentate over this like crazy Japanese deathmatch wrestling, including the infamous uh, uh, Mick Foley, uh, 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 Terry Funk uh, exploding match that they had with barbed wire and all that stuff. Uh, so there were like the first night was a lot of, yeah, the light tube matches and, and, and barbed wire and, and, and that kind of stuff. Not nearly even as bloody as that stuff that was 16 people in the crowd that I saw in Northern Los Angeles a couple months ago we talked about here. <laughs> um, but still like, you know, enough that was like, you know, the tubes were got crazy, um, you know, the, the, to the point where it's like, yeah, the crowd, thankfully, like the juggalo crowd doesn't care and will probably just be, you know, happy to be part of it if they get glass in their face. Um, so, so that, that was interesting. Um, it, it's also again outside, um, and they moved it, uh, uh last year to a, a portion of the grounds that has this like natural amphitheater effect to it. Like it's mm-hmm. like got hills on three sides. So you can't really like, you just set out your lawn chair and the, you know, your camping chair and, and you can just sit back and watch. Right. Uh, so that, that it's a really cool kind of setup. Um, as far as that goes. So a lot of fun there. And of course their bloody mania 10 event was their kind of big event of the weekend that had Jeff Hardy. Uh, I was surprised to see Willie on Mack drugs. on drugs. Apparently uh, Willie Mack of, um, of uh, uh, Lucha, Underground, Lucha Underground, which was my introduction to him was, was, was seeing Lucha Underground, of course. And um, they're, Oh geez, I can't remember who that champion is. Uh, that's why I pulled up the, the, the stuff here. That's not the right, that's not the right one. Um, Congo Kong. I'm sorry. Congo Kong was the other one. I'm sorry. I thought I saw Umaga on here somewhere and I got really confused. But I think I like went to the wrong page. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, their tag teams are always interesting. Like the, the, the ring riders that come out in bandanas like gang style. Uh, the Viking War Party I discovered last last year with American Viking and Little Viking. Um, uh, it, 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 it's, pre- it's pretty cool. They had a TLC match, six man tag. Violent J. Return to the ring. You guys may remember the ICP were, were wrestling way back in the day. Uh, came out in WWE with the WWF at the time with the oddities and wrestled in WCW a little bit. Um, I think made an appearance in ECW at the time, perhaps too. But uh, uh, since it was a big 17th um, gathering and uh, it's, it, it's the, the number 17 has a lot of significance with, with ICP. Uh, so it was kind of like a 20th anniversary show. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he, he declared last year he was going to get in ring shape and actually pulled off like a hell of a moonsault. He said at the seminar the next day that uh, he, he completely broke like three toes. And he still had to do like the ICP show that night too. Uh, so <laughs> uh, Crazy Mary Dobson, Samantha Heights is a, a, a face that we've seen here, like IWC, VOW especially. Um, um, Hornswoggle was there, Swoggle. Against Officer Cole Cabana. If you get a chance, um, I know I, apparently these are out there. Uh, uh, look for YouTubes of Officer Cole Cabana. So, of course, Juggalos, hey cops. So he comes out as a police officer and tells everybody he's going to arrest them and fuck them in the ass with his, his flashlight. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Seriously. I know, I know that sounds like weird. Fantastic stuff. Um, but but it, yeah, it was a blast. And then they had Girl Fight, which is apparently a promotion that Madman Pondo uh, is promoting out of Detroit. It's all girls, and they were actually like, there was they were like, hey, if anybody, you know, they're like looking for people to book them. They're looking to tour. They have, I mean, like they're going out a few places. Um, so I, I'm curious, like, you know, is this the kind of thing that we can get to Pittsburgh? You know, because I mean, it's a good lineup of girls, like like uh, uh, Mary Dobson, like Mickey Knuckles was part of it. We know from um, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, of course. Britt Baker was a part of it. A uh, few gir- few girls there. I I, I don't know. Uh, but looking at uh, looking them up later, I found out you know they're definitely like part of like Shine and Shimmer and things like mm. that. So it, it was a good collection of stuff, and and it's great to see 
uh, it, that the girl women's wrestling isn't like lingerie wrestling, like I expected. You know what this crowd, you know, it is like a good women's wrestling match, and and the fans are are for the most part respectful uh, to that for you know considering where you are you're, where you're at. From there, I went to Micro Championship Wrestling <laughs> at a bike rally in Sharon, PA, about three hours three hours from there, about an hour and a half north of Pittsburgh. Um, which met up with Chachi and 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 the and the ladies, and uh, I was amazed because I ran into these guys actually Thursday, just sitting there waiting for a, a show uh, at, at, on the grounds, and they're just like the whole group of them in MCW shirts walking by me. Sure, you know, and I, I, I ended up getting a picture with them. Turned out they played the Munchkins in the Wizard of Oz uh, theme set that they did that evening. Uh, so there you go. It was a fun show. Uh, and this is the same MCW micro championship wrestling that was um, uh, the reality show with Hulk Hogan. They actually played a, an audio clip of Hulk Hogan introducing them. So uh, but but it was uh, about six guys. Um, and the one guy that apparently runs the thing that I like to call the, the, the midget wrangler. Um, but, uh, that, you know, live announcing and everything the entire time, uh, I, it was, it, it was pretty good. It, they, they probably had about 50 people there, uh, actually ran into, um, one of the guys, I don't know if you guys remember from the group, the, uh, guy dressed as Bray Wyatt, um, uh, with Matt Hardy, uh, Scooch, uh, he's been down here for IWC as well. So I get to hang out with him a little bit for this. He, he went to both days of the show, uh, cause they actually had a show, uh, Saturday and Sunday for, as part of it. Buck Cherry headlined on Saturday, by the way, guys. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it was fantastic. I mean, it's all like, it's, it, it was just like, you know, they had the soldier character that they called Lieutenant Dan. They had the, the, the Iraqi character. They had the cowboy character, which actually is like my, my sister knows his mom, actually. So uh, we're, we're hoping to maybe talk to him here in the future <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Uh, so and, and, and it was it was great. It was um, uh, there was a pimp character that came out uh, uh, that that uh, he 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 was uh, claimed to be uh, related to Huggy Bear. He's a Huggy Cub. Um, it, it, it was good stuff. And of course, uh, Raw here in Pittsburgh as well. So so. That's my general gathering experience. Lots of wrestling, tons of stuff. Jeff Hardy destroyed furniture, <laughs> 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 but um, but it was it was a, a good time there. So good vacation for us. So, um, but other than that, hey, if you're in the area in Pittsburgh, of course, IWC they just had their Wipeout show this past weekend. DVD is edited. Uh, and we we're actually processing it and should be up there uh, this week. Over at IndieWrestling.us. And of course, Renegade Wrestling Alliance having a show this weekend, RWALive.com. Uh, I don't know who's anybody's, I don't know who's going to be on that. I think it's uh, the general uh, roster cast of characters. It's probably the Patriots going to be part of it. He seems to be around a lot. Um, but other than that, you know, other other regulars like like Jason Corey and uh, and G River and such. Uh, Amen, anything, anything else on your radar as well? Um, it uh, doesn't seem like it. Uh, uh, obviously, this will probably be uh, uh, touched on in the uh, uh, around the Indies column. Uh, uh, I should have mentioned it when we spoke with uh, about uh, Pentagon, uh, but he actually was victorious and, and is now a champion in America for uh, uh, AAW out of Chicago, uh, beating Sammy Callahan uh, uh, in Chicago to uh, win the championship. So uh, I think that was kind of big Indie news to come from this weekend. Um, uh, I know, like, uh, I believe next up he's set to fight Tommaso Ciampa uh, for the title in one of uh, Ciampa's, uh, what looks to be Ciampa's, uh, one of his final matches before heading off officially WWE. So, uh, exciting stuff happening in the indie world. Uh, yeah, AIW just had Absolution this past weekend. And I know yes. they, they've announced a Johnny Gargano fi- farewell show coming up as well. Uh, so... Go check that out uh, if you're if you're up in that area. Of course, it'll be on DVD, Smart Mike Video, all that kind of stuff as well. So, Mike, any uh, any wrestling in your area? <laughs> I know you got um, some well, around there. There's going to be a um, uh, an indie show at the end of August mm-hmm. that is going to have um, Kurt Angle versus Cody Rhodes. That's that NEW promotion that yeah. that, that I was involved with here in uh, up in Niles. 
Ohio. Yeah, Northeast Wrestling. And mm-hmm. it's also going to have uh, Jeff Hardy versus Liger, which Jeez. I'm still debating I might go to. Because <laughs> those two things sound great. Uh, just the one the rest thing of the sounds show, great. I don't know. Matt Hardy's supposed to be there. Jerry Lawler's supposed to be there. They always get a few big names out for yeah, the, and they get they get a big few, outdoor show. They get usually get a few uh, uh, mixes in there too, and even even the the talent that you haven't heard of, like like here locally, they had like La, Chris Larusso and and Ad, Andrew Palace there, or Dylan Bostic's usually involved. So it, it, it's a mix of it, but but you know they're usually even the lesser known names or no slouches or some of the better guys you'll see from the area probably. Uh, so, so I, I, I recommend, uh, NEW, they tour pretty widely in the Northeast for the most part, of course, mm-hmm. Northeast wrestling, I guess, but, but like widely, like into Ohio, into, I, I think I've seen Maryland and Virginia shows from them, uh, pop up on their schedule. Uh, but don't definitely check them out. They were, they were great to work with last year and, oh, uh, Sorg, mm-hmm. Sorg. Mm-hmm. I just looked up the rest of the card. There's a match that trumps both of the two I mentioned. Jerry Lawler versus the Brooklyn Brawler. Oh, you're going. You're going. <laughs> you're going. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, Sammy Callahan's going to be there too. So, friend of the show. There you go. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, let us know any indie wrestling you guys are checking out. We're getting back in the vibe here with the Indie Mayhem Show. Check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And say it, Mad Mike at Mad Mike4883 on the Twitter. See what's coming That's out me. from him. The rest of the stuff from San Diego Comic Con will be released here uh, shortly. And of course, uh, Amen Two Please, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Go check it out. Yep, InspireProWrestling.com. Next event on August fourteenth. Be sure to check that out. There you go. And of course, IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, SortRetronMedia.com. It's where a lot of my things are. Sign up for the newsletters at uh, all those sites. Yeah, that's right. All those sites. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Supporting you guys. Put a taste of the four. Sing, sing, sing. You know how I act now. When you got a problem, come and see it from the back down. Act wild. Steady sipping chain. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.